in prayer changes things. Father, we pray to you that the change of how we understand the word will come in us in such a way, O oh God, that our eyes being open will see the power of the truth of the word of God. Anoint your servant, O oh God, that that power will be manifested by the reading of the scriptures as well as the explanation of them. This I ask, this I pray in Jesus' name and for his name's sake, amen. Today we want to look at another way men begin to walk with God or before God. We have been studying how from Genesis chapter 2 to Genesis chapter 9, uh, they walked with God. And Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. Both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, we are told about Enoch's walk with God. Noah walked with God, and God did not take him. God left him to save the world that we currently live in. And so men that walk with God are either one, God takes you to heaven, or he leaves you on earth to save a world. But after the flood, the descendants of Shem, I mean Noah, his three sons, Shem, Javeth, and Ham, they were all that was left from the previous world of the walkers. And so for a little while, they, well, let me take that back. God came down, but he didn't walk with them. He told him, I'll leave the, my presence or my rainbow. And so that rainbow only would manifest itself during the storms of their lives so that, that they, they would not fear that God was no longer with them. Because you don't fear anything when God is among you. That's what Mary and Martha said to Jesus. Had you been here, my brother would not have died. And so... Abraham becomes the next character that we see, and we see that he walked before God. And so I've been spending my weeks on the, those that walked with God and those that walked before God. But Abraham really didn't walk before God. He walked before the Lord God. And we saw that they were called gods that were also called lords, that was also called angels, that was also called men. So a person could be referenced as God, Lord, angel, and man, and be the same person. Today, I want to start on the next group of people. So we, 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 we got through the book of Genesis, and then we're going to look at another way God began to deal with man in his walk. And so let's look at Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. So... This is a strange verse, and most people put a lot of emphasis on Moses, not realizing the real emphasis is who, Mo is who Moses is with. And who is Moses with? He's with Jephro, the what? The priest or high priest of Midian. And if you don't know much about the Midianites, the Midianites are descended from Keturah, Abraham's third wife. And so what did Jephro keep? He kept the mountain of God as high priest. And so as Moses is doing the flock, there on in the wilderness of this place, the angel of the Lord, this is so important, who appears to him? 
not the God of the mountain, but the angel of the God of the mountain. And that angel appeared to him. Look in Acts 7, verse 30, because Stephen talks about this same event. He's going to get stoned for knowing the truth. And when 40 years had passed, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire in a bush in the wilderness of Mount Sinai. And keep going. When Moses saw it, he marveled at the sight. And as he drew near to observe, the voice of the Lord came to him, saying, I am the God of your fathers. So the word of the Lord comes to him. The word voice and word is identical. Remember, we saw how God would speak to people after the flood. The word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. Uh, the Lord would speak from heaven by the angel of the Lord. So God is not on the earth walking with mankind during, during these days after the flood. A representative of God who has the same power as God because they stand in the place of God, whether it be a, 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 a man, whether it be a Lord, whether it be another God. They have the presence of God in them or the power of God. So continue. I am the God of your fathers. So this angel says to Moses, I am the God of your fathers. So, so it's very clear that it's the angel that says, I am the God of your fathers. Continue. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses trembled and dared not look. Then, and so, go ahead. Then the Lord said to him, take your sandals off your feet. So this angel is called God and Lord and angel, all in these reference. Notice the three things this one angel has the title of. He's the God of their fathers. He's the angel of the Lord. And he's also the Lord. <laughs> the same thing I was showing you all when it came to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and in, in, in the life of Joseph. Now, Continue. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their groaning and have come down to deliver them. So notice what he says. There's someone who resides in heaven. And he heard the complaints and their murmuring or the, the pain or the turmoil they was under. So he says, I have come down for what purpose? I have heard their groaning and have come down to deliver them. I have come down to deliver them. So the, someone up there sent someone down here to get someone down here to go and deliver them. <laughs> so the person that's coming down is the representative of the person that sent them. Then he goes and gets someone in our likeness and our kind to be the deliverer. So Moses is going to be recruited by someone who was sent. But the someone who was sent is known as God, is known as the Lord, and in this case, the angel of the Lord. So he has all of these different titles or names that he goes by. Continue. And now come, I will send you to Egypt. Now I will send you. So you have to realize that there are more than one person sent to get them out of bondage. <laughs> and the person that sent the people to go get him out of bondage, he's still residing in heaven. Okay. Now, let's go back to um, Exodus 2, verse 16. Remember now, I'm going to, I'm, I'm trying to show you some things that is written in the scriptures, but when you lack understanding and, and you don't know that here a little, there a little, line upon line, precept upon precept, a scripture here and a scripture over here gives you a better picture of the scripture that you're reading. So go ahead. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters. So the priest of Midian has seven daughters. This priest of Midian is this a, is also a type and shadow of the of the person that's on the mountain. So the priest of Midian is like the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost have the sevenfold spirits of God. 
So this is a median. It's, in other words, in the story is a story for us in the future. So we started with men walking with God. And God was among them. He tabernacled among them. We end in Revelation 21 and 22. Behold, the tabernacle of God is back with man. Where men will be walking with God. They have no need of light of a sun or the moon because God and his son is among them. They have no need of the temple because the person that they worship him is there. <laughs> you don't have to go to the temple to worship God. He's here. So everything is pointing back to the beginning. But in between the beginning, God has to get reestablished fallen man to get him used to God's presence, walking before him so that they can walk with him. So we must, we must, we must, uh, uh, um, what's the word I want to use? Uh, we must mature before God as we learn to walk with God. So this priest of Midian, go ahead, continue. And they came and drew water, and they filled the troughs to water their father's flock. Then let's skip to verse 21. Then Moses was content to live with the man, and he gave Zipporah his daughter to Moses. So one of the spirits of God, of the high priest, is a type and shadow of the Holy Ghost. He gives him one of the spirits. So Zippor is representative of one of the sevenfold spirits of God. Now, I want you to look in Numbers 10, starting with verse 9. Now Moses said to Hobab, the son of Ruel, the Midianite. So when Moses come out, and when Moses get all of the tribe, look, look at verse 28. Thus was the order of march of the children of Israel according to their armies, when they began their journey. So when they begin their journey to go out of Egypt, there's a story told that you probably never hear. So Moses said, remember them, Moses is sent like Jesus to go to get us out of the world. So he goes to Egypt and he tells them to apply the blood to their doorposts. Then they go through the Red Sea, which is a type and shadow of being born of water, the water is the Holy Spirit. But then he must take them to Pentecost, the Mount of God. And so how do he go there and what there? So then read the story. Now Moses said to Hobab, the son of Ruel, the Midianite. Moses so now notice that Jephro has another name. And Jephro has a son. So Moses is married to the daughter of Jephro, who also has a spiritual name. What is his spiritual name? Ruel, which means the friend of God. All right? So this high priest has more than one name. And what do the high priest do? He keeps the mountain of God. And who helps him keep the mountain of God? His seven daughters. So God sends Moses to the house of the priest that keeps the mountain of God with his seven daughters. Stick with the story. So Moses says, I don't know how to lead people in the wilderness. So look what he says to the brother of Zipporah. Moses' father-in-law, we are setting out for the place of which the Lord said, I will give it to you. Come with us and we will treat you well. For the Lord has promised good things to Israel. And he said to him, I will not go, but I will depart to my own land and to my relatives. So Moses said, Please do not leave, inasmuch as you know how as you know how we are to camp in the wilderness, and you can be our eyes. So who is this brother? He's the eyes. So the eyes of the Lord of everywhere. So Moses said, I know who you are. I know who your sister is. I know who your father is. I don't want to be in the wilderness with, unless I can be led by one of the eyes of the Lord. And Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So Moses asked for the eye to lead them in the wilderness. But who is the eye? The eye is the brother of Zipporah, the daughter 
of Jethro, who also goes by the name of the friend of God. So what is this mountain? This is mountain where the friends of God come, not the sons of God. This is not Mount Zion. This is not a mountain in Jerusalem. This is a mountain in Sinai. Continue to read. And it shall be, if you go with us, indeed it shall be, that whatever good the Lord will do to us, the same he will do to you. So they departed from the mountain of the Lord on a so, journey. So they departed from the mountain of the Lord on a journey. So Moses needed an eye. I want you to know a natural eye. This is not a spiritual eye. This is a man in the flesh who has the insight, the know-how to get you through the wilderness. And Moses, with all his anointing, with all his uh, relationship with God, needs a man to lead him. What humility to say, I don't know the way. And Jesus said, the man said to us, the man Jesus says to us, I am the way, <laughs> the truth, and the life. So God had to send a man to us to lead us in the way to the Mount Sinai. God has to send a man to us to lead us through the wilderness. And people say, well, he saw Moses, but Moses needed a man who would be his eye. Look in Judges 1 verse 16. What happens when they get to the promised land? Remember now, he promised this brother-in-law, if you go with us, I will give you an inheritance in the land of promise. Are y'all with me? Look in Judges 1 16. So when we read the story that we just read, we don't know, did he go or did he go back? But watch what it, the, the, the writer of Judges tell us. Now the children of the Kenite, Moses' father-in-law. Ah, here they are. Go ahead. Went up from the city of Palms with the children of Judah into the wilderness of Judah. So where did they get their portion of? Because they did lead. And Moses gave them their portion. Joshua had to give them what Moses promised. In other words, they are also a tribe in Israel. <laughs> and, where, and where did they get their inheritance? And who did they live among? Go ahead which lies in the south near Arad, and they went and dwelt among the people. So they dwelt among the tribe of Judah because they were the eyes. So that meant then the eyes in Judah. <laughs> and so in the line of the tribe of Judah, who is their eyes? They're right there. So when the Bible tells you the eyes of the Lord are everywhere, that's natural eyes as well as spiritual eyes. And so when people say, I don't need no, I don't need no man to lead me, well, you, you don't need Jesus either. Because everybody that say that Jesus did not come in the flesh, that's the spirit of the Antichrist. You're telling me you don't need, oh, you just need the Holy Ghost man to lead you. No. Jesus chose men that were led by the Spirit to lead you. Let us continue. And so, and so we get to this story of Moses, and now I want to go to the book of um, um, Isaiah 63, verse 9. In all their affliction, he was afflicted, and the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them, and he bore them and carried them all the days of old. So, it's the angel of what? The angel of his presence. In other words, presence has an angel. You remember? They heard the voice of the Lord walking in the spirit in the garden. And they hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. <laughs> See, there was more than one person in the garden that they were running from. So hence, my children can run from my presence. I can be home. 
And they know I'm home. And they run because of the presence that I'm home. Because I may not be home. And they don't have to run. Because I'm not presently there. And so God's presence is a reality. It's real. You can feel it. And the presence has an angel. And it's known as the angel of his. Should we read that again? So you don't think I'm making this up. In all their affliction, he was afflicted. And the angel of his presence saved them. Who was he the angel of? The angel of his presence. Why is that important? Let's go back to Exodus and see, and let Moses and God help us. Exodus 33, verse 14 and 15. And he said, my presence will go with you. So whom did God say he was sin with Moses? See, my presence. Go ahead. And I will give you rest. Then he said to him, if your presence does not go with us, if he does not go with me, do not bring us up from here. Don't, don't bring us up. So who did God sin with Moses? Mm -mm. This is not the angel of his presence. This is his presence. And the presence brought his servant, his angel with him. You must separate the <laughs> presence from his angel. So, you need, I want you to see all of the people involved with Moses. So I already told you, I gave you a man. <laughs> then I gave you the angel of his presence. Now I'm giving you his presence. <laughs> let's go ahead, let's read that again. And he said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Then he said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. Now, I want you to look at Exodus 23, starting with verse 20 to the end of the chapter. Behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way. So now he says, I send an angel before you to keep you in your way. Go ahead. And to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. So whoever this angel is, you must obey what? His voice. Go ahead. Do not provoke him, for he will not pardon your transgressions. He doesn't forgive like I do. Don't provoke him. Why? For my name is in him. Because I have given him my name so that when you see him, you see me. So they're going to, God is putting the angel in the midst of him that he says, don't provoke him because he is a, a complete representation of me. And how did you give that? I gave him my name. So what, and don't provoke him because he's not me. He, he don't have the patience like I have. What? Don't take my word for this. Go ahead. Let God speak. But if you indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. So if you obey the person that's in my stead as God, he will be God. Go ahead. For my angel will go before you and bring you into the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. So how am I going to cut them off? He's going to do it. But how is he going to do it? Because remember now, these guys don't come alone. The presence came with his angel. The God of the mountain had an angel at the base of the mountain. Take off your shoes. Why? You standing on holy ground. Who am I? I'm the Lord God. I'm the God of your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But, but he representing the guy up on the hill. <laughs> you have to see the story. You have to read it. Not let people tell you what it means. It tells you what it says, not what you think it means. Let's continue to see what it says. Let's continue to read. You shall not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, 
nor do according to their works. For you shall utterly overthrow them and completely break down their sacred pillars. So don't bow down to their angels when I gave you minds to bow down to. That remember, remember now, take off your shoes. You're standing on holy ground. He had to bow down to the angel in the bush. So you still have to bow down to an angel. What angel? The angel of the Lord. The angel of his presence. Continue. So you shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water. So how do I get my bread and water blessed? I bow down to the angel that the Lord sent me. So God sent us Jesus. But we don't supposed to bow down to a man. But that woman that got down and touched the hem of his garment, my girl got down. <laughs> <laughs> Martha, she got down and called him after the resurrection, by the way, my Lord and my God. <laughs> and he said, not just yet. Give me a time. I got to be accepted first. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> Soon as my father says, there's nothing in my blood sinful, nothing in my blood dis disrespectful. There's no disobedience there. I delight to do his will. Once he accept that, I'll be your God from that point on. But right now, I'm your Lord. And so God sends men. He sends angels. He sends different things that he do want us to bow down for. So he said, every knee shall bow at Jesus and call him Lord and God one day. I decided to do it today. Why waste time? Go ahead, continue to read. It's going to get better, by the way, when I'm reading. And I will take sickness away from the midst of you. No one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land. I will. And so in the name of Jesus, he can take sickness from us. Jesus is like Joseph we read, I, I shared last week, where he had power over all of Egypt, but not in the throne. As I told you, Jesus is the child of the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. In him resides the fullness of the Godhead. They consummated all of themselves in one body, Christ. And the three of them became one in the Lord Jesus Christ. The same way me and my wife, when we get together, we come one in our children. We're not one, but in spirit. But if we want to be one in the flesh, we must consummate the relationship. The same thing that God is going to do with the church, with Christ at the rapture. He's going to make us one in him, Father, that they may be one in us like I am in you. That will only happen at the rapture. It, at the wedding, we will be consummated. So shall we be with him, the Bible says, forever. Woo, continue to read. I will fulfill the number of your days. I will send my fear before you. I will cause confusion. So now this is a different spirit. I will send my, I will send fear. Remember on Jesus resided the sevenfold spirits of God. Wisdom, understanding, counsel, knowledge, uh, 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 power, and the fear of God. So the, the Holy Spirit is saying, I'm going to send also the spirit of fear to terrorize the people that I'm sending before the angel, my presence, and his angel. Continue. I will cause confusion among all the people to whom you come, and will make all your enemies turn their backs to you. And I will send hornets before you, which shall drive out the Hivite, the Canaanite, and the Hittite from before you. And so, out of the fear of God, he sends his spirits that resides in him. They're called the hornets. They come out of the nest. What do a hornet come out of? The nest. What is the nest they come out of? The fear of God. <laughs> He's a hornet nest. Continue. I will not drive them out from before you in one year, 
lest the land become desolate and the beasts of the field become too numerous for you. Little by little I will drive them out from before you, until you have increased, and you inherit the land. And I will set your bounds from the Red Sea to the sea, Philistia, and from the desert to the river. For I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand, and you shall drive them out before you. You shall make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. They shall not dwell in your land, lest they make you sin against me. For if you serve their gods, it will surely be a snare to you. And now, watch with the next verse. Reminder, there's no chapters and verses in the original. Read the next verse that continues this. Watch us what happens. Go ahead. Now he said to Moses. Now after he said that, then he said to Moses next. What did he say? Come up to the Lord, you and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel, and worship from afar. So he tells them, come eat with me. Come fellowship with me. Remember then, the Most High God, the real one, can't dwell in the earth. It's too small. He can't dwell in temples. It's too small. So the representative of a God upstairs says to the here, that he has a God on the mountain. And the God on the mountain has his angel at the base. And the angel has an angel that serve him. So you have to see the hierarchy of who leads us. So you have the pastor that leads you. You, you may have an elder or bishop. You may have, you, you may have the, uh, the Jesus himself. You may have the, the word of God. You may have the Holy Ghost. You may have the Father. All of them combined work together as one to lead you to where we're going. And so when you're walking with God, you have to walk with more than one of them. <laughs> oh, I ain't done. Watch with the Lord. Go ahead, continue. And Moses alone shall come near the Lord, but they shall not come near, nor shall the people go up with him. So Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the judgments. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words which the Lord has said, we will do. And so look in verse 9. Then Moses went up, also Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel. So let's count. Moses, 1, Aaron, 2, Nadab, 3, Abihu, 4, and 70. So how many people went up all together? 74 people went up the mountain of God. The angel didn't stop them was at the base of the mountain, an angel. So remember then when Elijah goes to the same mountain, remember the angel met him before he got there <laughs> and said, you can't go there unless I help you. So the angel of the mountain met Elijah and gave him a meal so that he can get through the desert for 40 days and 40 nights. Then when he got to the base of the mountain, there were different people that met him before he got to the Lord. The first person he met was the word of the Lord came to him and asked Elijah, what do you want at the mountain of God? And how dare you come here? And he said, I was jealous for God. So he said, wait here. Then earthquake met him. That's an angel. Then fire met him. That was an angel. And then hurricane met him. All three of them see if they could terrify him away from the mountain of God. Remember, so terrifying was the mountain that says that Moses was in great fear, the writer Hebrews said. So after all of that, Elijah was not moved. So the word of the Lord came here and said to him again, impressive. Go wrap yourself up. And I will go and talk to the God of this mountain to see if he wants to talk to you. Look what Elijah had to go through before the God of the mountain finally came down and he said, what are you doing here? And Elijah said, I'm the only one left of the prophets to believe in you. <laughs> and he said, no, you're not. I have 7,000 more just like you, but I have hidden them to the day of revealing. They have not kissed the image of the God, Baal, nor bowed the knee to that other God. Because Baal was a real God. 
And so then these 74 people are with God. Continue. And they saw the God of Israel. Who did they see on the mountain? They can't, they can't see the real one. Why? He can't fit in our world. They saw what God? The God of Israel. They didn't see the God of the Amorites. They saw the God of this mountain. That's why they had to go to that mountain. <laughs> he was the God of the mountain. And, but who, who was on the, that mountain? The God of Israel. Continue. And there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of sapphire stone. And it was like the very heavens in its clarity. Whoa. He has a representative, a, 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 a type and shadow under his feet, like the heaven above. And he called that firmament heaven. It's a base that God, and that heaven, that base is called his throne. And the earth is his footstool. What house will you build me, said the Lord, seeing my hand had built all things. So he has a miniature one. So this guy representing the one above him has a miniature pavement like his and everything. He has a throne like his. He's, he's, he's the, um, what's the word I want to use? Uh, you know, when you go, the hologram, the hologram. He's the hologram. So God is showing from his place himself. And this guy is representing God as Lord God Almighty. Then he has someone to represent him as Lord God Almighty. <laughs> Who has someone to represent him as Lord God Almighty. <laughs> he says, I did not come off this mountain, but my angel to represent me, he can come off this mountain. Because he's like God. I did not come from heaven. And he represents the God above him. I did not come into the universe. <laughs> Ooh, I got scriptures for everything. Let's continue to read the scriptures that I have. But on the nobles of the children of Israel, he did not lay his hand. Why? Because they saw God and he didn't kill them. Remember what God told Moses? You cannot see me and live. But now they're all looking at God and nobody's dying. So which God are they looking at? The one that no one can see or the holograph? <laughs> Continue. So they saw God and they ate and drank. Then the Lord said to Moses, come up to me on the mountain and be there. Well, no. so where did he come down? There was something even higher. Remember what he told in the beginning when we read? He said, don't let them get as close as you to me. So we get to see God depending on our calling. So somebody, some, some of us see God in a way that the others don't see him. They saw God, but not the way Moses is going to see them. So Moses and Joshua, they go a little closer. Continue. Come up to me on the mountain and be there, and I will give you tablets of stone and the law and commandments which I have written that you may teach them. So this person is going to give them the law that he wants them to have beneath his mouth. Remember now, the law comes from this God. It, before the flood, there was no law. They were the sons of God. And God don't put laws on his children. He just asked them to obey. So if we are to walk in the, in the covenant of the new, there's no law. The law came through Moses. Grace and truth came through our Lord Jesus Christ. We walk by grace through faith. It's a gift. It saves us. What saves us? Obedience. So in the days of the flood, it says, Peter said in his book, they, God, Jesus went and preached to the spirits that were disobedient, not sinners, because there was no law. And so this God, he puts a law on people. Whereas our God, he puts no law on us but love. Wow. Continue. So Moses arose with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up to the mountain of God. And he said to the elders, Wait here for us until we come back to you. Indeed, Aaron and Hur are with you. If any man has a difficulty, let him go to them. 
So now I'm going to help explain this to you because you read it and I'm, I know you didn't understand it. They ate with God, but there was someone higher than this one, than the one they ate with. So while they were eating with God and he didn't put his hands on them, someone else said, Moses and y'all, y'all come up here and talk to me. <laughs> so who were they eating with? The angel of his presence. But he was God. But, but it, it, let, me, let me give you this verse again. Verse 12. Then the Lord said to Moses, come up to me on the mountain so, and be so, there. So who were, they, who were they eating with down at the, at the base of the mountain? <laughs> it, it told you before, they were eating with God. But it was a God above that God to say, come up higher. Because I can't come down there. You can see my angel, but I need you to come up higher because you are more sanctified with them. You can see me. And so only two people went further. Joshua, the one that's going to take them into the promised land, and Moses. And so Moses and Joshua represent Jesus and the Holy Ghost going up to the Father who sent both of them to bring us out of the world. Did y'all get that? Let me say that again. The one that tells Moses and Joshua to come up, saying, y'all two come up, and you see me. And so, on the Mount of Transfiguration, Jesus only took three up. But this is what it says. They were asleep while they were up there. And when they awakened, they saw two people about to leave, Moses and Elijah. See, you got these stories in the new, but you're not, you're not connecting. And who was in the cloud? The father who they could not see. And, and Jesus had been transfigured while he was talking to them because he could only talk to them in energy, pure light. Light speaking to light. And the light was so bright of the father that he covered himself with a cloud because he's an all-consuming fire. So not everybody gets to talk to God that's over God or the Lord that's over the Lord. You remember? I shared three times already, three messages out on the internet. God is a God of God. Jesus is not a God of gods. Jesus is the Lord of Lords. <laughs> and the king of kings. But his father, who is he? He's a God of gods. And he's not a Lord of lords. He's a God of gods. He doesn't have the title Lord of lords. He has the title God of God. But beneath him is his son who has the title Lord of lords and king of kings. Move right along. Go ahead. Verse 14. And he said to the elders, Wait here for us until we come back to you. Indeed, Aaron and Hur are with you. If any man has a difficulty, let him go to them. Then verse 16, um, 15, so Moses went up. Go ahead. Then Moses went up into the mountain, and a cloud covered the mountain. So that means something came down. So, but somebody was already there called God eating with it. And as Moses descended, a cloud came down. Then who was the God that was already eating with them? Wow. Go ahead. Now the glory of the Lord rested on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And on the seventh day, he called to Moses out of the midst of the cloud. So even though he came down, he, it took seven days before he finally called to Moses. One whole week went by while Joshua and Moses is waiting to hear from God. But down, God is eating with the, 70, the, the other 72 people because two of the 74 are now up higher and it took and, and the cloud so he comes down remember the cloud is a ship that's cloaked it's like what we call a ufo it's cloaked so god comes down and for six days it's on the mountain and then out of, uh you know you know when it, uh, uh uh what's that um the encounter of the third day Ding, 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 ding. And then all of a sudden they start playing that, that, that tune. 
<laughs> it started playing that tune. Boom, boom, boom. And the Bible said it was like a trumpet, like a blast of a trumpet. Just like in the movie of the third encounter. What a coincidence. And finally, out of that, guess what it says? Go ahead and read it, brother. And God did what? Now the glory of the Lord rested on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And on the seventh day, he called to Moses out of the midst of the cloud. The sight of the glory of the Lord was like a consuming fire on the top of the mountain in the eyes of the children of Israel. So Moses went into the midst of the cloud and went up into the mountain. And Moses was on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. And so something opened out of the ship. And Moses went in. Moses went in. And he went in 40 days and 40 nights. Verse 1 and 25. Then the Lord spoke to Moses. Then who was the one down there that we were eating with? <laughs> oh, this is deep. I know it's deep. And so let's go to Exodus 13, verse 21, verses 20 to 21. So they took their journey from Succoth and camped in Etham at the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light. So as to and go so, by. Remember that he stay up on the mountain, somebody called God, and then another one's going to come down on the mountain called God. But before they got to the mountain, he sent someone. Who did he send? It tells us again. He sent what? And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud. He sent his cloud. He sent a cloud. What is the cloud as a type of shadow? If you ever watch um, um, Star Trek, you have the ship and you have the shuttle. And what God sent was the shuttle from the cloud. <laughs> it's the little one. And so out of the cloud comes the little cloud, the shuttle. And the shuttle comes out of the cloud. And if you look at the third encounter, you saw the little ships came before the big boy came. This is what you're watching. You're watching this movie. And so here's this little cloud. It goes out. And what can this little cloud do? What was this cloud? Go ahead. To lead the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, so as to go by day and night. His job was to lead them. And so, what was he by day? A pillar of cloud to lead the way, and by night in because a pillar of... Because he was in the wilderness, he was cool, an egg addition. The heat of the sun in the desert. So he blocked that. With a, with a, he cloaked as the cloud by day. But at night, the desert get real cold. And what was he by night? A pillar of fire to give Kept them light. At the right temperature. He was the egg addition system. So what did the Lord send them? The thermostat. <laughs> to make sure that the conditions was perfect. To live in the desert like you lived in an oasis. This is the same desert where he's going to give them water from a rock. Remember now, I'm going to digress. 1 Corinthians 10, verses 1 to 3. I'm going to digress because guess who's not leading them in the wilderness? Jesus is not leading them in the wilderness. What is Jesus doing with the church that was in the wilderness? Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud, all passed through the sea. So under this cloud, they were all passed through the sea. We're talking about the cloud that would lead them. He led them to water baptism. He's going to lead them to Mount Sinai. He's going to lead them to every experience they need. What? The little shuttle is going to lead them. Continue. All were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. So in the cloud, and the, we're baptized into water too. Not knowing that's our cloud. <laughs> and so Jesus said to John the Baptist, baptize me into the cloud. And as soon as he came out of the water, what came out of heaven? Another cloud, the shuttle, the spirit of God rested on him <laughs> and led him into the wilderness. The same thing that goes 
going on with Moses and the Israelite went on with Jesus and goes on with us. We don't know that we are in the cloud and being led by the cloud. <laughs> Go ahead. All ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. So who followed them? Christ. And what was he in the wilderness? The rock. So they came to the Mount Horeb, and there was a rock there. And they were told to strike the rock to get water. And out of my belly shall flow rivers of living water. Our rock said the same thing. This spoke this of his body, which was not yet open yet. So everything is happening. It's the type and shadow of what was happening with you and I. So when they got to Mount Horeb, there was a rock. The rock is out at Mount Horeb. Continue. But with most of them, God was not well pleased, for their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Because they would not obey the people that was leading them. All right? So let's go back to Exodus um, 3, verse 14, when God first gets Moses. And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. And so I will be who I want to be with whomever I want to be that I send. Go tell the people of Israel that I am the one that sent you. So guess what he sends? He sends his angel. He sends the angel of his presence. He sends his cloud. He sends, he used Jephro's um, son. God sends people to lead us. And he does, he, and he demands obedience to those people that he sent because the person sent represent the center. The sinner. And so whoever sends me, I have the authority. Man. <laughs> Woo! I was, uh, I'm going to digress. I was, with, I was talking to somebody last week and it was, the wind was blowing hard and I stuck my hand up. And they said, what you stick your hand up for? I, I, and, I, and I said, um, for the wind. They said, yeah, the wind stopped as soon as you put your hand up. So I put my hand back down and the wind started again. And then I said, I put my hand up again and it stopped. I put my hand down and it came. And I was talking to one of the members of my church who was a police officer. And I said to him, if you go out there in the middle of the street with your uniform and put your hand up, what do the traffic do? He says, it stop. I said, do you know the reason why? They, rep they, they see your uniform. I said, when I did that, the wind saw my uniform. And, and I used to have to speak to the wind. And then I just put my hand up or put it down. Why did I do it more than once? In case somebody thought it was a coincidence. I digress. Let's go. Where are we at? Uh, Exodus three fourteen. Go ahead. And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. And then Exodus 6, verse 3. I appear to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty. And this doesn't make sense to you. Because God is trying to tell us who he sends, the leaders and guide us. So he said, with Abraham and Isaac in them, I sent my angel, who? Allah, God Almighty. I'm not sending that one with you. With you, I'm going to send the angel of my presence. And what is his name? Jehovah. So one name is Allah, God Almighty. The other one is named Jehovah. So God in Sunday time spoke to the fathers by the prophets who, uh, who he spoke to by his angels. Has in these last days spoken to us by his son. For which of those angels, Allah Jehovah, did he ever call my son? But when he brings the son into the world, he says, let Allah and Jehovah worship him. That's Hebrews chapter one. Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews Tell the people, the Hebrews, because the Hebrews came out to worship God at a different mountain. So the writer of Hebrews is saying, we don't go to worship at that mountain anymore. 
In Hebrews 12, he says, we have not come to the mountain that could be touched, that Moses was afraid of and everybody else. But we have come to New Jerusalem, Mount Sinai, Mount Zion, the city of the living God. Now, God now is speaking from heaven. He's not speaking from mountains down here anymore. Now, to us, that's all the writer Hebrew is saying. But in those days, they were being led by the God of the mountain, by the angel of the God of the mountain, by the presence of the God of the mountain, by the angel of the presence of the God of the mountain, by, by, the, by the, the priest, high priest's daughter, by the high priest's son-in-law, by the high priest's son. They all were being led. All of these people are leading Moses to the land of promise. And you have to learn to obey all of them to get there. Man. And go, continue to read Exodus 6, 3. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty. I, I appeared to them as Allah, God Almighty, the Almighty One. I appeared to them with my angel Allah. Go ahead. But by my name, Lord, I was by, not known by to them. By my name, Jehovah, I didn't send that one to them. Go ahead. I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage, in which they were strangers. And so who met Moses at the burning bush? An angel. Who led them and, 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 and fed them? An angel. What was that angel name? Jehovah. But it was not Allah. Christianity, boy, I, I turned, I don't know how many people off. They ain't going to listen to me no more right now. And so, Exodus 40, verse 38. I'll start with verse 34 to 38. Then the cloud covered the tabernacle of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. So, they, so the Lord said, then build me a sanctuary where I can be among y'all. Remember, we, got, we want to get to the place where God tabernacle with us again. So God said, build me a tent. Because all of them going to live in tents. I'm going to live like y'all. I'm going to live in a tent. So Jesus lives in a tent just like us. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. He got a tent just like us. Knowing you not that your body is the temple of God. You're the tabernacle of God. But we have a new tabernacle reserved for us in heaven. That when this one is dissolved, we have a new home in heaven reserved. So he's building a new place for you up there. Continue. And Moses was not able to enter the tabernacle of meeting because the cloud rested above it and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Whenever the cloud was taken up from above the tabernacle, the children of Israel would go onward in all their journeys. But if the cloud was not taken up, then they did not journey till the day that it was taken up. So notice all of the things that lead them. What's leading him here? The cloud. Well, it's also led them. The angel would also went before them. The fear the hornets, all of these things you're reading and you don't realize they work together as one. Continue. For the cloud of the Lord was above the tabernacle by day and fire was over it by night in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journeys. Exodus, look at Numbers 9, verse 15 to 23. Now on the day that the tabernacle was raised up, the cloud covered the tabernacle, the tent of the testimony, from evening until morning, it was above the tabernacle like the appearance of fire. So it was always, the cloud covered it by day, and the appearance of fire by night. Go ahead. Whenever the cloud was taken up from above the tabernacle, after that the children of Israel would journey, and in the place where the cloud settled, there the children of Israel would pitch their tents. So never confuse the shuttle. With, with, with the ship. This cloud was over, only over the tabernacle. That should never be confused with the cloud that was over all of them, keeping them cool and keeping them warm. So it was a cloud with a cloud. Man. Woo. Exodus 14, verse 19. And the angel of God, who went before the camp of Israel, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud went from before them and stood behind them. 
And so you had both the pillar of the cloud and the angel of the Lord. They're not the same. Exodus 16, verse 10. Now it came to pass, as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the children of Israel, that they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, I have heard the complaints of the children of Israel. So they were complaining one day, and all of a sudden, as Aaron was listening to them complaining, somebody was walking, and he was cloaked with a cloud. And the cloud began to glow. That wasn't good. <laughs> you know, go ahead. Speak to them, saying, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God. So it was that quails came up at evening and covered the camp, and in the morning the dew lay all around the camp. And when the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a small, round substance, as fine as frost, on the ground. So what did God do? He bought food from his location, and it, from that point on for 40 years, he had servants make sure they cut the, because it was called the corn of heaven. It was called angel's bread. He gave them food from above for them beneath. So the two worlds was connected during breakfast time. Because he was moving among them. Man. Now, Psalm 78, verses 56. I don't think I'm going to get all of my Moses through today. There's so much to, to know in this truth of Moses and who led him. Psalm 78, verse 56. Yet they tested and provoked the Most High God and did not keep his testimony. So who did they provoke? The Most High God. And they did not keep his testimony. Continue. But turned back and acted unfaithfully like their fathers. They were turned aside like a deceitful bow. For they provoked him to anger with their high places and moved him to jealousy with their carved images. Look in verse 40. How often they provoked him in the wilderness and grieved him in the desert. Yes, again and again they tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Now, I want you to hear this. This is frightening. The writer of Hebrew said the same identical thing. Hebrews chapter 3, verses 7. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion, in the day of trial in the wilderness where your fathers tested me, tried me, and saw my works so 40 years. So they testing in the wilderness, y'all? It tells you right here, Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost says to the writers and the listeners today, go ahead. Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion in the day of trial in the wilderness, where your fathers tested me, tried me, and saw my works forty years. Therefore I was angry with that generation, and said, They always go astray in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swore in my wrath, They shall not enter my rest. So what did he say? They will never enter into his rest. We're not talking about the natural promised land. So it says, verse 12, Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. While it is said, Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. For who, having heard, rebelled? Indeed, was it not all who came out of Egypt, led by Moses? So who was leading them? Moses. Go ahead. Now with whom was he angry forty years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who did not obey? So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. So what 
kept him out unbelief and i'm gonna close on this next chapter four starting with verse one i'm gonna open up something and i'm gonna probably not get into it because I, my time is out but go ahead therefore since a promise remains of entering his rest let us fear, lest any of you seem to have come short of it. Continue. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. So I, I know this is going to be hard. You didn't know that he preached the gospel to them. You had no idea. As well as to us. They got the same identical gospel. Go ahead. But the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. For we who have believed do enter that rest. As he has said, so I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. And what rest is the Holy Ghost talking about? The next verse. For he has spoken in a certain place of the seventh day in this way. So he takes you back to Genesis, y'all. He said, let me tell you, the world that I created in Genesis chapter 1 is not the world that the Lord God created in Genesis 2. Don't take my word for it. Read the next verse. And God rested on the seventh day so from he all rested his rested on the seventh day, go ahead. From all his works. And again in this place, they shall not enter my rest. So when God rested on the seventh day, when he created the spiritual world, the Lord God went out and created a duplicate one, a natural world. It looked just like the Father's world, except it was made of matter and not energy. And so he made his people from dirt, where God, everything he made was from spirit. And so there remained a rest of God because he rested on the seventh day and then he let the Lord God, his son, make his world. Therefore God, the same right in Hebrew, look in Hebrews chapter, chapter one. So verses 10, and you, Lord, in the beginning laid the foundation. This is the Lord God. What he did, he laid the foundation of his world. Go ahead. And the heavens are the work of your hands. He created something that looked just like his father's, but they, they were not permanent. They will perish, but you remain, and they will become old like a garment because they were not eternal. Go ahead. Like a cloak, you will fold them up, and they will be changed, but you are the same and your years will not fail. But to which of the angels has he ever said, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool? And so because, what are they? Verse 14. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? And so he sends forth his angels to represent him, to, and therefore he only sends them to the heirs of salvation. So we call them Lord, we call them God. But look what he says of the Son. Verses 7. And, and of the angels, he says, who makes his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. But to the Son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever so and ever. So he calls the Son God, even though he is God. Go ahead. So he says to the Son, your throne, O God, go ahead, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore, God, your God. Therefore, God, your God. So Jesus is a representation of God. So we call Jesus God because he represents God. And so nothing has changed. Throughout the Bible, people were calling people Lord and God, who was representing Lord and God. So the disciples came to Jesus one day and said, show us the Father. And he says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And Isaiah the prophet said his name should be called the Prince of Peace, Wonderful Counselor, what? Everlasting Father and Almighty God. Who would be this? Unto us, a son is born. And the son should be called Almighty God, Everlasting Father. Who should be called that? The Son. So it says, therefore, God, thy God, have anointed thee with the oil of gladness above your brethren. And Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. 
follow me, obey me. Why? Because his name is in me. And on that note, to him that is able to keep you from falling, the one that presents you faultless before the throne of grace, the only wise God our Savior, be majesty and power both now and forever and ever. And if you like my messages, you can say like, or you can say anything. God bless you. Thank <laughs> you.